Well, look, we're going to do something new. We're going to use the Q-Link section. This is the newest thing they made. This whole, you know, thing with the knobs and the faders. Ooh, faders. Ooh. You can use this to make your sounds sound a little funky, a little more flavor, a little more this. Use them to actually touch parameters and turn parameters. Ah, I'm talking a lot. Check it out. That's what you got to do. You don't understand. With the sample kings. We're going to hit the track now. Play the sequence. We got a beat. We got our harpsichord sound. And now we're going to add some little effect to it using our Q-Link section. First, I'm going to hit Setup. Now here in Setup, we've got to have our cursor right here on Multi. We're using Multi 1. Now here also you can see each one of these knobs corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the two faders, 5 and 6, are right here. I'll move them up and you can see them move right there. That's cool. Now below Multi, we have this Q-Link 1 section. The first part here is called Part. We can affect all the parts, I mean everything for all the parts, or just one, or part two, or part three, or four, and so on. Now below that part we have Assign. Now here we can actually assign a parameter, like Amplitude, which means volume. We can pan it back and forth. We can change the pitch. We can also change the LFO rate of one, LFO one, two, three, phase, the biphase. We can change everything. Look at these parameters. This is amazing. It's a great machine. You can change so many different parameters in our assign. Back to off. Now below that we have type. We can replace or offset. It has to do with the way we turn our knob. Read more in your manual to understand this properly. Now here we have a range. We can select the range from minus 100 to a plus 100. That means we can take this knob and bring it down here to the bottom here like this and we're going to be at, wow, minus 100 from where we were before or plus 100 from where we were before. So you have to make sure you understand where you are in your sequence and in that particular sound how far you want to actually affect the range of that sound. Below here we have control. Now as of the date of us doing this tape, Control has yet to be assigned a particular uh, parameter by Akai. We suggest you go to the website or get a new manual, if they have a new manual out on it, and check it out. For this video, we're using 1.4. That's the operation we're using. The system operation. Well, the system, well, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Next, we have MIDI right below here. This is MIDI 1. A. Now we have to go up here to part. If you turn part, you'll see this change. It's two, three, see that? It's changing. As we change the part, we can change the MIDI channel. If you have a MIDI channel assigned here to a particular instrument, you can change the effect of that instrument. It's really cool. And the same thing happens also here for the fader. The only difference here is there's a fader here and a knob here. Well now, we're going to try and affect the sound, probably the harpsichord sound, and do something to it. We're going to set a part first, which is part one. We're going to assign a parameter. We're going to use pitch. And then we, I want to assign a range. I don't want to get to go all the way down and go really low and I want to get a real short range. I want to use like minus five. I'm going to turn my jog wheel to minus five. And then I'm going to go to plus five. So I want to get a short range, not too big a range. So I can change this pitch within this particular range. Next, I go back to the main screen. Yeah. And I want to make sure what track I want to record this to. I want a blank track right there, track eight. Next, I go back to setup. And I want to like three, press play and see. See me change the knob here? My range is just about right where I want it. So I can change the pitch of that particular sound. I put it back up and down the middle. It's the pitch that I naturally had it at. Okay. Now we're going to record this data onto this particular track. We're going to press main screen. We're going to press active, which is the button right below the Q1 knob. The light comes on green. We're going to press record and play, get our metronome going, and turn the wheel.
see it's recorded right there in the sequence. It's recorded right here in sequence A. And I can actually mute that sequence, mute what I just did, by press the mute button here, and it's back to normal. So we record that data on this particular track. That's really cool. Well, now we can do it to another instrument. We're going to maybe change the volume of a different instrument. We're going to press setup. And next thing we're going to do is pick the, let's see, Q Link 5. We'll select the part. And we're going to assign amplitude. So we can control the volume of that particular sound. That's really cool. We're going to probably activate that button below it. It says active on Q link 5, where the fader's at, right below the fader. We're going to press main screen, and we're going to pick a new track to record new data to. But first, I want to turn up the other track first. I want to turn the volume off first on the track 8. So let's mute track 8 first. And the mute is on. See? We're going to mute what we just did, so we don't get too confused. Now we're going to track 9, and on track 9 we're going to record this new amplitude data for the drum sound. We're going to press record and play. See the drums come in and out? Perfect. Now I can actually mute this I just did, mute it. See the drums play straight through the whole track. So what we did here is that we recorded that data from the Q-Link section onto that particular track you want to use. Okay, now we're going to use the Q-Link section to affect our sounds, but this time using note values. First, we're going to go to Setup, and we're going to use our fader this time, and we're going to assign it to an actual part. We're assigned to part one. We're going to assign amplitude. Next, we're going to press Q Link Sequence. Now, here in Sequence, we can either have knobs or we can use the faders or sliders, as it says here. Well, I want to use Q Link 5. First, I want to just probably activate Q Link 5. I'll put Q Link 5 on by pressing F5. Good. And then next, what I want to probably do is set up the sequence. I'm using sequence one, as you can see right there, it says loop. And below that, I have a step. Now, the step sets up my note value and how it affects here from 1 to 16. In this case, I'm going to use eighth notes. Great. Now we're at 1. I'm going to move the slider up. And that volume's going to be that high. I move it over now to 3. I want 3 to be high. Move it to 5, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. So we have an alternating up and down, up and down, up and down. Next, we're going to go back to um, main screen. We're going to activate our Q-Link sequence by pressing the button. And we're going to press play. See so go in and out. Now we can actually go back to Q-Link sequence. And we can change this eighth note. Watch this. So it's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. See that? That's like a DJ there, right there. That's like 130 seconds. That's really, really cool. We can even change the parameter. Wow, it's still playing. We'll press setup again. We can change some amplitude. We can go to tuning if we want to. Ooh, that's ill. That's the tuning, see that? And that has to do the same with the sequence. It's just affecting it in the same way. And we can do panning. And that's how it works.